Derby. Hello and welcome to the big match in the Axis-sponsored FA Cup. Those two ties and also the key moments to bring you from Pride Park, a fourth round replay between Derby County and Blackburn Rovers. Andy Townsend's uh, here to analyse what's proved to be another dramatic night of cup football and how. So let's get straight on with the action from the Valley. No other honours possible this season for Charlton Athletic and Tottenham Hotspur, so tonight's fourth round tie meant a lot to both teams and their supporters. Mark Fish was the only change for Charlton from the weekend's goalless draw between these two. For Spurs, defender Gary Doherty replaced cup-tied Andy Booth up front with Ledley King at centre-back. Clive Tilsley is our commentator. We join it with the first half action already underway. Jensen breaking from midfield. Got it through the legs of Freud. Couldn't get through the legs of Saul Campbell, though. Doherty play behind Sherwood and seized upon by Parker. Jensen was coming back from an offside position. Parker's got on alone, and Sullivan had to be brave and needed the assistance of Saul Campbell. It was a ball break by Scott Parker, who realised he had to go it alone because his teammate Klaus Jensen was coming back. Now Young, Ledley King, or even Leonard's news looked lively for Tottenham in the uh, opening exchanges. Luke Young. Well, they're squeezing across Sergei Reprov, and now Leonardson. Well, the angle was against him, but there was a position and a snap about the approach play, which will have encouraged Tottenham. Leonardson has certainly been involved in their better moments so far. Teed up by Sergei Reprov. Head on by Svensson. This is Bartlett. Spencer under pressure. Powell arriving in the penalty area. Is it really Chris Powell? His first goal for Charlton Athletic. It's come from the most unexpected of source. Tottenham Hotspur, who hadn't conceded a goal coming into tonight's match in more than eight hours of football, have conceded one to Chris Powell, of all people. Experienced left back stealing forward, and as the ball bounced between hesitant defenders, Perry seemed to leave it for his goalkeeper. Powell it was who risked life and limb to stick his head in and make the most of the indecision. Powell. Can't stop him coming forward now. Bartman finding Spencer. Expected it, but it sailed no more than a yard over Neil Sullivan's crossbar. Tottenham have been on the back foot from the outset here. And Svensson was given time to get his shot away. Young. Sherwood beat to it in the air by Tor. It's Campbell. Brought down well and hit well, and Illich must have seen that a little late. Snapshot through the crowd from Saul Campbell. And although it's close to Sasa Ilic, he had to react quickly when it eventually found its way through that red curtain and onto his hands. Red Rock. It's a clever turn. A little unlucky, but it'll come for Sherwood. Good goalkeeping by Sasa Ilic. Courageously down at the feet of Tim Sherwood. After Sergei Red Rock's well hit shot. Had to be very alert there because it was a deflection which put Sherwood in. Rebrov did really well here. It was a little unlucky at first, but it ran kindly for Sherwood. Fish took on one chance too many there. He ran into Doherty. Square for Rebrov! to take the chance quickly and he just lost his bearings after Gary Doherty had picked the pocket of him and now very relieved Mark Fish smart piece of defending initially but then he took on more than he could handle and Rebrov because it just bounced up to him his body shape was good he made a decent contact contact guided it in the vicinity of the goal but it's not going in for the Ukrainian 
by Freund, protected by Doherty. Now Sherwood. Tim Sherwood. He shot through the defender, and again Illich was unsighted slightly. Sherwood didn't quite find. In fact, there was a slight deflection on the shot. Young up towards Doherty. Strong enough to hold off Todd there. Done well, joining up with Sherwood. And again. Parker with a challenge on Sherwood. One back by Freund. Turn away by Parker once more, but only as far as Step and Freund. Now Darren Anderton. When Illich saw that a little bit late and had to hold on with Ribrov closing in. Shooting not through a crowd of players, but Lillick seemed to react as if he didn't catch sight of it until the last moment. Charlotte deserved their lead when it came in those uh, opening exchanges. They were quicker out of the blocks, but Tottenham have responded since. The second quarter has been far more evenly contested. Throwing his Charlton Athletics. Soon to have his chance to have his say with his players. Last moments of the half. Well, George Graham knows only too well that the headlines that would greet a Spurs defeat would be bolder and bigger than for a Spurs victory. A very occasional goal scorer in Chris Powell has chosen this very occasion to open his account for Charlton Athletic. And that is the difference between the two sides at the halfway point. It's Charlton Athletic 1, Tottenham Hotspur 0. Neither team has lost a game since the turn of the year. Although both made heavy weather of their third round assignments at Dagenham and Leighton. of expectancy in those games. The weight of expectancy on Tottenham is never greater than when they're playing in the FA Cup, particularly in the year of the one. Campbell away, and as far as Svensson, who got a shot away, not with sufficient power to embarrass Neil Sullivan. Corner for Spurs that they don't let Charlton start as quickly as they did in the first half. As far as Rufus, who is held back there by Freud. Advantage play. This is Bartlett, and Stewart couldn't take it in stride. Svensson! Three minutes of the second half gone, and clear daylight for Charlton Athletic. Max Svensson has made it 2 0. Kerbyshire, the only Charlton man not on his feet applauding, but he'll be delighted inside. Richard Rufus made it happen. Barlow forced it on, Stewart couldn't quite gather it, but the deflection fell kindly for Matt Svensson to double Charlton's lead. Kerry. Doherty, short of support. Held it up well by Gary Doherty, taken on Andy Todd. Good run by Doherty, and it's gone in an own goal. Richard Rufus turned it past his own keeper, and Tottenham Hotspur are back in business. Rufus was the goal scorer, but full marks to Gary Doherty for making it happen. The man who got Tottenham's headed winner at Leighton Orient in the third round, driving on past Andy Todd, firing across into the danger area too dangerous for Richard Rufus to be able to deal with in that little area between goalkeepers and defenders and Rufus facing his own goal turned it into his own goal Stewart to Kishishev Sullivan holding on Was a 
goal threat from the uh, two Charlton wing backs there. Rebrov brought down. He levered to the ground by Todd as much as anything. looking beyond the wall it's Anderton oh it's squeezed in Spurs level Sasa Ilic couldn't keep it out Darren Anderton's free kick Tottenham have scored twice in five minutes and are back on terms It came with pace and bounced just in front of the goalkeeper. But really, having got across there, Illich would have expected to have made the save and helped it round the post. But Anderton's free kick bobbled into the side of the net on the wrong side of the post for the Charlton goalkeeper. 2-2. Two, two. And here's Leonardson. They've got another! Sensational turn round here. Well, they talk about the superstition and the year of the one, and you begin to wonder, is he going to be Tottenham again? Three goals in no time. Alan Kerbishley sitting on a lead of some comfort is suddenly the manager in charge of the team with it all to do. Even Leonardson makes it 3-2 to Tottenham. Five of their eight FA Cup wins have come in the year of the one, a year with a one at the end. They've been talking about it from the beginning of the season, and now they're beginning to dream it again. Todd. Bartlett, tackled well by Campbell, has been immense for Tottenham tonight. Red Rock to Sherwood. This is Young. Leonardson was forward, away by top, on by Young, Leonardson, now Rebrov, all against the legs of Sasa Illich, and that could have put the tie beyond Charlton, Rebrov unable to capitalise on some sharp passing on the edge of the penalty area. Leonardson. Kick. Rob. And Red Rob is onside, and Red Rob has made it four for Tottenham. And that should complete a sensational comeback. From two down to four two up, Sergei Red Rob has surely guided Spurs into the fifth round. He's had some opportunities tonight. He's had one or two in recent weeks that he hasn't taken. Maybe just level with the last defender. It was touch and go. But the way that he lifted the ball beyond the onrushing Illich was the mark of a polished finisher. Rebrov's eight goal for Tottenham Hotspur has completely turned round a tie. Charlton's heading to still in a state of shock here. Mark Fish, unable to control the ball. It's Sergei Rebrov. Can Tottenham Hotspur finish this famous second half performance with a flourish? Well, it's the wrong side of the netting for Sergei Rebrov, but uh, 
a moment which in many ways has epitomized the football they played in the last 40 minutes of this half full of belief again charged down by Jensen as King trying to get it clear Lisby wouldn't run for Jensen they had men over to Sherwood back to Sullivan that was awkward but he managed to smuggle it away what must have been going through his mind when the second Charlton goal went in here's Jensen Powell to Solako but five minutes tonight which could have turned a season and maybe more for George Graham Tottenham the team who couldn't score a single goal scored three times in a little over five minutes early in the second half to turn a night of disgruntlement into a night of delight inspired by Saul Campbell and the legend of the year of the one it's Spurs who go into the last 16 to face Stockport County and how much further can they go final score tonight Charlton Athletic 2 Tottenham Hotspur 4 George the FA Cup is special to Tottenham how special is that sort of a win yeah, very good win. I thought uh, the first half uh, they went one no nothing up from a mistake. I think with Neil Sullivan, but after that, we I think it was ten efforts on go uh, ten efforts, five on target. Their goalkeeper was did very well, so I was a bit disappointed when they get an early one in the second half, and it looked uh, it looked dead and buried. But showed great character the boys. Uh, scored four, could have been more. We're very disappointed because I, I just feel that you know we had the game sewn up in some respects. Uh, and we've managed to lose it. Uh, I'm sure George will come out and say it was because of their good play, but uh, I'm, I'm adamant it was because of our bad play. The media usually hit me with uh, stats. I mean, that's seven games undefeated. It's not bad for a team under pressure. <laughs> Gabriel Clark with the questions there. Uh, Andy, Spurs were the better side over 90 minutes. No, no question in my mind. I thought the first 20 minutes, Charlton started very well. But Tottenham, you know, despite the... Uh, the goal drought they've been going through lately, they kept plugging away, and there was always goals there for them, I felt, tonight. And in Sp the end, as I say, th you know, they deserve them. Spurs' defence has been terrific lately. It's five clean sheets, I think, but it was a bad start and a bad goal. It was a bad goal. It was a, was a poor goal to give away, and there was a, a number of errors for me. The first one is Darren Anderson, the bottom of your screen there highlighted, the wrong side of Chris Powell. Now, from here on in, Chris Powell keeps going, Perry and Sullivan hesitate, and the Charlton man gets there first. George Graham blamed the goalkeeper. I think there's two or three people to blame there, but it was, you know, fair play to Chris Powell. He kept going. 2 0 down, three minutes into the second half, the season over, George on his way possibly. What mm. changed it? Well, Gary Doherty for me was exceptional all night long. He really was. His running was very, very, you know, full of running all night long. I mean, here he picks this ball up, he's facing the touchline, going absolutely nowhere. Instead of that, he wriggles out of that, goes past the the defender cuts down to the byline, great ball across, and gets a little bit of luck. And that's exactly what Tottenham needed. They hadn't had much in the first half. Now, here again, this is, this is at 3-1. He finds his man, his centre forward, Rebrov, who's onside, scoops it over the goalkeeper. Great finish. I just thought he played very, very well. And we know he can play at the back, and this is important He was as a well. defender, wasn't he? Yeah, exactly. You know, you know, he sticks to his task there with Mark Fish and sees the danger off. But uh, I was very impressed with him, a young man in a very big game for him. Alan Kerbishley said it really, Charlton only themselves to blame. Uh, and when you, you're pulled back to 2-2, the one thing you don't do is yeah. immediately then concede a stupid goal. Well, absolutely. You've got to keep the ball, close ranks, try and keep it tight for five or ten minutes and get yourself back in the game. Instead of that, they commit suicide. Look, they give the ball straight away. Now Tottenham are back at them again. They get a little bit of a little bit of luck here. The ball ricochets through to Leon Hartson, but that is really poor defending for a top Premier League club. You know, they should be better than that. And really and truly, they can't have any complaints. Stockport next up, it's looking brighter for Spurs, isn't it? You know, when you think about that year ending of the one and all that business. Well, they're good at home. I mean, I, I would expect them to beat Stockport. I don't think there's any doubt about that. I think they're too strong, but uh, you know, there's a long way to go in the competition. But it's something like that can just turn your season. Absolutely.